they probably couldn't hear me because my mic was uh, uh, turned off. But uh, yes, now we are live. All of us are live. We should all be live. I pray to God. We Hopefully, are live. the chat will let us know if if they can't hear us. Oh, that's, that's the absolutely. Best part about it. So, uh, chat, hello, welcome to this uh, uh, Street Fighter stream. And uh, of course, on screen you're seeing the best Street Fighter. I guess that poll is a little bit biased, as uh, we've already made our pick here. But uh, we are here for good reasons. <laughs> not just Van Dam, not just Street Fighter the movie, but of course I'm joined as always, or rather, uh, joined uh, especially today by John Lindman as my wingman. That's right. I'm here to help moderate because you're the one. This is your first time doing a public stream where you're the one hosting and playing, isn't it? Yes. Uh, so this is Digital awesome. Foundry and my parents have a kind of similar vibe where they don't like me going into public. But we're letting me go outside a little bit of my comfort zones and doing these uh, new things now. That's so right. Benchmarking, job talking to too. people. It's a whole new world for me. But uh, you're not the only wingman I have today. I also have the best man here because... Oh. We have, of course, the legendary Oliver Harper, who has his YouTube channel with the uh, retrospectives of 80s action movies and everything in between. He also made, of course, In the Search of the Last Action Hero, one of the best action movie documentaries ever made. On the, I would say better than Electric Boogaloo from uh, Cannon okay. Films. <laughs> Absolutely. And, of course, Oliver, you're here because you have your current project. And rather than me explaining it for you, why don't you uh, introduce yourself to the people who already know who you are, because I did, but uh, might not be too familiar with you and your project. Well, yeah, after In Search of the Last Action Heroes, I thought about what I'd do next, and uh, Street Fighter 2 kept popping up because I played Street Fighter endlessly uh, during the early 90s. I still play it today. One. Um, so I thought about making a documentary about the Street Fighter 2's cultural impact, its history, all the merchandise, the live action movie, the anime, everything surrounding it. Yeah. And uh, we did a Kickstarter last year and um, successfully crowdfunded. And uh, we've been filming the last, oh, what was it? That's about nine, ten months. So it's um, going extremely well. Uh, we've got 14 That's interviews awesome. in the bag. And, uh, and more interviews to film. And, uh, it's pretty exciting, and uh, we shot a lot of material. We shot a lot of the merchandise for the games, uh, you know, and uh, sort of everything kind of surrounding you could buy related to Street Fighter. We filmed, and we still have more stuff because Audi's got tons of Street Fighter Two merchandise. We need to photograph okay. and go to interview you guys so, in a couple of weeks. And just to interject here, we're still hearing from the chat that uh, our volumes are too low and that the game volume is way too high. So you I should turn off the game, the game volume. audio for now. Oh, okay. So uh, I turned my volume up a little bit, so yeah. hopefully that's better. But I think, Oliver, you're as loud as you can get. I think we just have to go closer to the mic. That's my problem, too. Get in real close. You have to make love to that microphone in order to be heard. Very strange to Discord and its audio levels. Uh, they're always low, aren't they? Yeah, people are saying... Uh, it muffled. seems that way. Yeah. yeah okay, guess, now, uh, now it's fine. So yeah, so you know, other do there is other documentaries out there on Street Fighter Two, which many of your viewers have probably seen, and you guys have probably watched. But uh, they focus a lot on the tournament aspect of Street Fighter, which is kind of integral to the history of the video game. But it didn't really that aspect didn't really speak to me, like my nostalgia for the game, because our tournament was like playing it in the, our bedrooms or the lounge, you know, yeah. with our friends or our parents or our siblings. And that was kind of what I wanted to sort of tap into with its history and everyone's kind of nostalgic memories about it. And, um, you know, we've interviewed James Goddard, who worked on Hyper Fighting and created the character DJ with uh, the Japanese uh, designer Akiman. Jeff right. Walker of Capcom USA, you know, he's absolute character talking about, you know, the history of the arcade business. And uh, Joey Anso, who directed Street Fighter Assassin's Fist, really kind of really cool guy very funny very charismatic and uh you know Stevie D'Souza as well the director of the live action film which we're playing in the game which is based on which is kind of one of the weird things isn't it a video game that's kind of a film comes out based on a video game then I make a video game based on a movie it's just full circle 
you know, crazy. Um, but yeah, it's, is, oh, are, it's, you, are you the, are you the, an absolute pro at this game, or? Oh, the game we're about to play? Uh, not. Yeah. I, I mean, it's uh, basically Street Street Fighter Two Turbo, Super Street Fighter Two Turbo. So I'm not too bad yeah. at it. It has some balancing issues, I'd say, from uh, some tinkerings, but. It's actually a fairly good game. It's something we talked about on uh, DF Retro on our um, PlayStation 1 launch. Yeah, episode. yeah, the launch one. That was Before awesome. We, yeah, we talked a lot about this game. Uh, so much so that some people were like, why? <laughs> but obviously we had a lot to say to, about it. And I always felt like this game got overshadowed uh, by kind of the movie and the uh, reputation it had at the time. So mm. I think today it survives better because people have a better uh, appreciation for the film as well. So I tried to erase uh, all Ollie's um, volume now, so he should be uh, better. Did you uh, stick in, him at two hundred percent in Discord? Yeah, I just went two hundred or... in Discord, uh, and I heard him better on my end. So hopefully, okay, as the chat catches up, uh, the volume should be uh, better. Yeah, apologize. This is always a thing. It's sometimes it's outside of our control as far as the levels from the guest coming in, and uh, it's yeah, that's welcome to the I world know, of streaming. I, I everything up, I'm fine. I, I oh, no, no, it's fine. We always before. spend yeah. about 10 minutes trying desperately to fix every tech issue that pops up. But I think your volume should be fine. I think the chat is just uh, about like three, four minutes behind. Oh, yeah, just um, crank that stuff up. So I've cranked it up, as but much of course. Can. And of course, uh, Ollie can shout. We also have the heavens. Uh, another camera that I can switch to. There we go. So this is a CRT view. So yes. if you want to see, uh, this is the mini CRT on my desk. So yeah. So you know, if if depending on how things go, we can always swap over to the PC engine being played live. If uh, everything over there. else but fails, you mean? Exactly. If everything else crumbles down, we at least have that. Uh, but yeah, I'll switch back to my uh, not so beautiful face instead of the uh, beautiful CRT. I, I there think we go. It's a f equal beauty. It's uh, <laughs> it's all good. Everyone would, on stream is beautiful, even the game. I think Cathode would be my Matrix name. I think. So, I have to uh, say. do you want to play the game, Ollie, first, or do you want actually the people to watch uh, the trailer that you put out? Uh, before we start the game, of course, you can play in the trailer, get them to sort of understand what the documentary is about, and uh, they can see the, I suppose the quality of it. Because um, my cameraman and uh, my crew have put a lot of kind of time and effort into photographing all this stuff, and uh, it's pretty spectacular. Yeah, it looks amazing from this. So, uh, yeah, let's check out the trailer, and then we'll be right back with we'll Street Fighter the movie. Street Fighter was a big deal. This new arcade machine's out, it's amazing, it's gonna take the world by storm. I've just played Street Fighter 2. He was like, he was almost shaking, right? I said, oh, what's it like? The graphics were extraordinary. There's a guy throwing sonic booms, and there's a stretchy guy. Flying sidekick into uppercut. <laughs> it was great. We were stacking quarters in that sucker all day long. Two kids in the arcade squaring off versus one another, as opposed to one kid fighting for the high score on the machine. The winner stays, loser pays. Everyone who played it loved it. Suddenly, the competitive play exploded. If you're a top-tier Street Fighter player, that a certain level of kudos comes with it. Street Fighter was a $100 million business. If we just add a couple more characters, and we allow them to be the same character, I think it'll be bigger. Street Fighter 2 was the first one, and it's the one everyone remembers. You went to every single arcade, it was Street Fighter Mortal Kombat, just trading spaces and staying in the top five for over a year. A lot of incredibly talented artists worked on Street Fighter 2. I tried to accentuate the fact that he could do like that. The console version was being discussed, and the fact that was even possible, it just seemed crazy it would even fit on the Super Nintendo, right? It was an amazing conversion. It was absolutely spot on. You have this explosion that's equal to Super Mario. With that came the merchandising. Back in the 90s, everything had a board game, and Street Fighter 2 had two different ones. The movie was gonna be massive. 
Capcom paid for the whole picture, which was $35 million, and they made $130 million. Look, it's Bam Bam. He's ripped, and he's got the moves. And then the anime. So this is what we need. These characters have stood the test of time. There was just something magic about it. It's always going to represent a moment in time that got something exactly right. Game over! You know, so that was basically what you're working on right now, Ollie. Yeah. yeah it looks yeah, looking yeah. looking good for sure. So I'll Thank be you. playing the game. So John, I'm sure you have a lot to say about just the general lighting and sure. just the look of the film. I mean, just looking at that trailer, uh, just the way it's shot, it looks incredible. And uh, just to, uh, I think Ollie mentioned it earlier, but John and I are actually being interviewed for this film uh, this That's month. That's right. Yep. Later this month, uh, I'm going to John's place for the first time in over a year, uh, mm -hmm. and we are going to do, uh, uh, I guess, pretty long-form interviews based on uh, everything Ollie has told me I need to comment on. So, uh, and it's all terrible. Every time uh, Ollie contacts me, he's like, "Oh, can you talk about this for the documentary?" It's like, but the, Ollie, this is like th the worst part of Street Fighter. Like, exactly. <laughs> That's why you're here. So uh, before you start talking, though, Ollie, you should uh, pick. The, should we do a movie battle or should we do a street battle? Oh, uh, well, it depends if you want to play as Guile, right? Yeah, so... I'm not a good oh, guy yeah. player, uh, but you know what? <laughs> uh, I think it's such a cool mode. We talked about it on the DF Retro. The fact that it is uh, the first time they did an adventure mode in Street Fighter. Um, okay. So and it actually has some unpublished uh, publicity photos from the film, so let's go with that. The first battle with Bison is like weirdly really tough. Um, yeah, you're supposed to lose it. Yeah, but people can't. You can't beat him. You can beat him. It just doesn't make a difference. So it just goes into oh, the same okay. cutscene. If you go a particular way, isn't it, with the story, you can you can complete the game in what about 15, 20 minutes. But if you go, if yeah, you go so, different routes that don't really follow the film's plot, you can make it like twice you, as long. Yeah, the, so you can definitely diverge from the plot of the film. Uh, but some of those scenes, some of the fights are actually cut uh, from the original script. So mm. um, it's kind of interesting how it's a hybrid of things from the movie. Uh, some are just made up for them for the game. It's nonsensical but i think the fight with ken uh, was originally supposed to be in the film so oh uh, yeah but yeah so oh, man. Uh, john feel free so first of all i will say if anybody in the chat has questions about something street fighter feel free to call her off and um so Somebody says this is the worst Street Fighter game ever made, and I, I would suggest you watch our PlayStation 1 uh, retrospective to get a lot of info on this game, but this game was actually made in Japan by Capcom, and it does use the same basic like gameplay engine as like the Zero games. Not Zero. That uh, era. No, uh, it's Super Turbo. It's, it's, oh, it's Super Turbo, right, not Zero. I always get that mixed up, but yes, you're right. It's the Super Turbo engine, so... Uh, it looks a little awkward because they're essentially trying to map like digitized sprites to like the keyframes, I guess, of the um, 2D animated game. Yeah, and it does look awkward now, but yeah, because they're overlaying the footage that was filmed during the 40 arcade game, which uh, was a different game by Interactive Dreams. That was that was Technologies. actually American made. Yeah, yeah, that, that was an American made game, and it's much worse, but it does have a lot of animation. <laughs> If you look at the Sagat sprite, it, you see it. I don't think it's much worse, guys. I think the arcade is a lot of fun, actually. It, just has, uh, <laughs> it is. It just it's a curiosity. <laughs> it's yeah, it's yeah. interesting. It's just not really Street Fighter, if you will. It has it's some a of the unique best, take on it, but it has some of the best digitized graphics of that era. Like the sprites are huge. They're well animated. Um, the footage was captured with like the highest end cameras, which Midway couldn't compete with. So I mean. 
there, there are things about the arcade game that definitely you know stand up is that the gameplay is um, notably not Street Fighter. Mm. True, but you can get you, you can get some good combos out of the arcade one. You can do like Guile can do a sweep and choose oh, yeah. into a flash kick. You know, yeah, you beat Bison. Just, you know, just... I beat the uh, Street it. Fight. Yeah, let's well see done. what happens. Game over. Oh wow. Yeah, so it just goes into that same. No, oh, yeah. annoying. That doesn't really make a difference, but it's uh, bragging points, I suppose. Oh man, they took the line from the speech and put it here at the beginning. It doesn't have the same impact anymore. Now, obviously, why I presume the the movie arcade game hasn't been re-released, yeah. mostly down to the uh, licensing of everyone's faces, I would imagine. Oh, maybe, but... Yeah, that I would mean, be the I, number I... one reason. But I don't think uh, Capcom has much of an interest to... I'm sure Capcom could do it uh, if they wanted to. Uh, mm -hmm. I guess Kylie would be actually the biggest issue today because her likeness is probably most expensive oh, yeah. uh, but um van damme i think would have been open based on his twitter feed he seems to be very fond of his back catalog these days let's go watch the harbor so in the in the comments here somebody's saying is this before or after mortal kombat and you could probably guess this was definitely after mortal kombat yeah, um, mortal kombat 3 and okay, yeah. sorry, somebody made my favorite comment of the night so far. He said, "Also, shame on you guys for not doing this on a Tuesday." Uh, we wanted to. Oh, yeah. <laughs> we wanted to. Uh, the original plan was to stream on Tuesday, and then uh, yesterday, I think we scheduled something else. So possibly, yeah. But either way, um, so yeah, this is the thing about this game. I found is if you actually load this up uh, on on a CRT in composite video not even RGB, uh, it all kind of blends together better, especially if you adjust the CRT brightness a little bit downward. It kind of gets rid of that over-bright appearance it has, and it ends up looking much more like natural and just uh, more like the look you'd imagine they were trying to achieve, I guess. You know what I mean? Yeah. Uh, it, it just kind of blurs away a lot of the artifact. So when you play it like this, it, it does kind of make the, the game, it doesn't look great. No, it looks very bright, it, doesn't it? The thing. Like, yeah, exactly. It looks like, very bright color, color and kind of washed out all over. Like, uh, and yeah, the contrast really on the sprites is very. You can see like um, Guile's sprite is super faded, whereas you know Ken's sprite is pretty evenly contrasted. But on a CRT, that, that doesn't really show as much. You can probably see it if you go up to the screen. And have to be that stickler, but. Most of us don't do that, except John. <laughs> oh yeah, man, people still can't can't hear Ollie. But I, I I'm sorry. There's I don't think there's anything else we can do, guys. It's like everything's maxed. Yeah, he so. just has to shout. Yeah, that's just man. Somebody was like, "Why does everybody always audio mix for headphones and such?" And I don't think we're even doing that. It's just like whatever works. Yeah. Uh, For live streaming, you just never know. I know. It's, is my it's, sound okay now? Am I sounding quiet still? Uh, quiet. I think it's. I, th I think it's be It's getting better and better. <laughs> what? How is this possible? It's like, this is strange. <laughs> Are you guys watching the movie? I know it looks like it, right? It's like we're actually watching the film right now. <laughs> So these publicity photos that they're using for these cutscenes, many of them I've never, like, I have most of the trading cards where some of them show up, but many of them I've never seen yeah. them. I guess they could be lobby cards, but I don't have any of the lobby cards on hand. I don't, do you have those, Ollie? Uh, I don't have those lobby cards, no. Mm -hmm. Or There's some images like press kit stuff, but I don't think those are, I think maybe one or two is in the story mode pictures. Yeah. But there is, um... An American kind of making of book or in a comic, like a uh, magazine, sorry, that Starlog would put out like a poster thing where you it's got a, it's like a promotional tie in with the movie. And as like a, tells you how they made the film. 
but in there there's loads of images that i'd never seen before until i right. discovered it recently so there's a couple of images that i think are in that magazine that are in in the game yeah um, i i've said every time i pick up anything based on this film like i always see that like oh so that turned up there and that turned up there so it seems like they did make mm. a lot of material for it i mean we know that there's lots of cut scenes and whatnot that still haven't surfaced yeah. so i guess it's weird hey, these, those images could, could just be like what capcom of japan took on set you know what i mean like just on their vacation to the set <laughs> you know. um but I, I, what I like about this this version is that because if you do Sonic Boom and press weaken weaken medium attack, you can do two Sonic Booms, can't you? Yes. So that was the inclusion they put in here, and that's kind of been replicated in. Well, I shouldn't say official because I guess this is official, but in later Street Fighter entries, uh, they uh, sometimes kind of included a similar feature. But here, the super move I think they call it, or special move. Uh, is yeah. that you can do these uh, double projectiles and uh, it doesn't really, I mean, as a Street Fighter player, it doesn't really make much of a difference, honestly, but uh, it's a cool feature. There are there are some innovations in this game, all of which we talked about in the uh, DF Retro. Also, uh, for those wondering, I, I saw in the chat, it was asked, is this game emulated or the original ROM? This is not emulated. This is the original uh, disc. running on This is the original disc running on a PlayStation. So, he has one digital. Yeah, exactly. It and uh, sharp. It does look good. Absolutely. Oh, man. This isn't this isn't the only game you have lined up there today, is that right? There's there's some other goodies coming up. Yeah, we'll play a few more Street Fighter things. Originally, I wanted to do Mister, uh, but then my Mister started giving me some issues before I started streaming. So it's just in the time oh, yeah. we have, like troubleshooting a Mister, it, like does not take five minutes. So we'll do uh, Street Fighter Remastered, the Pyron hack for uh, the Genesis. And uh, right. see what else we have time for. But um, shall I shall I go talk to Chun Li, or should I release a Ryu or Ryu as they say in the film? Yeah, yeah. Go see Ryu. Yeah. Okay. Good old Byron man. So how much are we going to talk about this game in the documentary? Yeah, actually, I'm wondering about that. <laughs> well, I've I've spoken to James Goddard about it. He didn't work on the game, obviously, but he had quite a lot to say about the movie Arcade. Yeah. Um, so there's two other people as well. I quizzed on the subject, but I think you guys will be able to sort of fill in uh, about the console ports of this. Yeah. Uh, in, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, so yeah, yeah, that's gonna be a fun part. Because you know, I don't, I don't dislike this game. You know, I think no. it's it's still it's still playable. It's just uh, it's a little bit slow and clunky and a little bit ugly. You know. Um, yep. It's, it's it's funny if you go back at you know when it came out, the reviews were pretty. They weren't scathing, but they were just like meh. It's like a 50, 60 percent they got in most of the magazines. I think one magazine gave it like nearly 90 percent, which I thought was a bit ludicrous. Um, but it was it was in the time where you got Tekken out and, and Battle, Arena, Battle Arena Toshinden. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. The it thing is, though, uh, Oliver, is that uh, these digitized style fighting games obviously became popular because of Mortal Kombat. And this was probably the best one <laughs> outside of, of Mortal Kombat uh, because most of the attempts at doing digitized fighting games were terrible. Yeah, they looked yeah. bad. They played bad. I mean, at least this the keyframes are actually pretty good in this, and yeah. I guess kind of derived from those r actual Street Fighter games. Uh, whereas most digitized games, they never got the keyframe right. Like the reason Mortal Kombat feels so good is like you do an uppercut, and each frame is so carefully crafted to give you that huge impact, and they they shutter the enemies at just the right time. It's perfect, but usually it just feels like in other games it's like a limp noodle. You know the attacks don't don't really hit. I mean, 
you guys have played way of the warrior you know and that's one of the better ones even but none of the attacks actually feel like much of anything it's just it's it's not good and i don't know why like people are seeing my voice is echoing through so somehow oh it something might be with the mixing be, yeah it might be be picking up on my end actually then uh, hold on I'll, I'll put in my headphones in a bit i forgot to put my headphones on oh is my voice playing through your speakers Probably. <laughs> <laughs> enjoy the reverb you're now listening to john eax version so hey man i don't mind hearing you twice <laughs> This game looks better than Pit Fighter. Yeah. I mean, if you're going to compare it to that, <laughs> I mean, if we're just going to throw all kinds of trash in here, I mean, uh, Survival Arts, it looks better than Survival Arts. It looks better than Tattoo Assassins. All oh, the good stuff. Oh, no, Tattoo Assassins. Uh, Jackie Chan had a... Um, that's an interesting one. Jackie Chan had a uh, digitized fighter, which... Uh, got an update and i actually spoke to frankie chan who's not uh, related to jackie chan but he worked on the production uh back when i did that uh, hd 101 um, article about it and i got to also talk to torsten nickel who was the bad guy in thunderbolt uh, the racing movie with jackie and he's in the game as well so i got to actually see a lot of the, the uh, promotional stills that they did at the hotel when they did the press conference for that i got to talk to people who worked on the game and uh it was made very quickly in a really dinky uh tent and it was not a fun experience for anyone involved so but uh, that's actually not too bad that's one of the better digitized fighters but uh, for many years it had like super difficult drm to, uh, that had to be reverse engineered so it wasn't until the mid 2010s or early 2010s oh, that yeah. that game became emulated so most people didn't know about it and still don't really know about it so one day we'll do a Jackie Chan uh, game DF Retro based on the article and I'm working on that book as well so lots of projects wow <laughs> yeah there's a lot going on isn't there I mean in terms of DF Retro as well on my side I'm actually working on that this week but because of another project that's also getting delayed again don't you love it <laughs> i love it there was a so, I, I had an idea for df retro which was uh, robocop and then i was watching all these oh. videos turned out ollie already oh, made yeah. a really good video on the robocop games so i guess uh, oh. whenever we start doing robocop we'll have to get ollie involved in the episode because <laughs> that's already a very good source um, and I was very true. happy because you talked about the Amiga game. Yeah, it took a long, long time to sort of get everything right because it was like, I think many people were a bit confused, like thinking Data East had bought it as basically copied Ocean's game, but it was the other way around. They yeah. Were, yep. Data yep. East got in there before Ocean, despite kind of licensing the game from them. Um, so yeah, well, the, the rights to make a Robocop arcade. So yeah, I mean this, it's. It's, there were so many different versions of Robocop 2 as well. It was just a nightmare trying to get the, get the right one and find the right information about that version. So, yeah. I, I love... That, that's something I love about that period is all of those different games that were licensed out on like so many different micros, consoles, arcades. Uh, you see them everywhere. And usually that means that everyone is either different, like really different, or at least like a, quite a variable port, if you will. Uh, you know, obviously stuff like Batman had a lot of that. Jurassic Park had a lot of that. You know, things like that. Batman I do enjoy them. Had loads of different variations. Terminator 2 as well. Oh, yeah, yeah absolutely. Yeah. Gosh, Batman yeah. Returns, that's that's a wild one. <laughs> that even has the, the point-and-click adventure game on the PC. Which is great. That's right. From Konami, no less. <laughs> published by Konami, yeah. Yeah, published by Konami. Not made by them, but still. Yeah, that uh, looks awesome. I mean, it doesn't play... Uh, we played that, and it wasn't great to play it. It had, like, a kind no. of weird uh, combat, which... Uh, only Indiana Jones got that right, combat and adventure games. But uh, yeah. back in the game... I didn't mind the combat in, like, full throttle on the motorcycle. It's true. Nothing special, but it was totally fine. Yeah. 
Audi, you're losing. What's going on? I know. I'm, I'm talking too much. <laughs> it's the controller's fault. Controller's fault, yeah. Uh, we've, uh, that we, man, this, uh, this movie keeps coming back into my life these days, because, I mean, it's I one of my it. favorite movies, uh, and we were honored enough that when they did the re-release, uh, with 88 Films recently, they invited me and John to do the official commentary, that so was we did that, and that was a lot of fun, uh, and, uh, yeah. people seem to have been enjoying that, I still get tweets about it, and when I will do more commentaries, and, uh, I'm happy to say that I've been doing a lot of commentaries lately, uh, some for 88, but also I've been doing a few with none other than Oliver Harper. And uh, last week All right. we did the Street Fighter the Animated Film, which uh, yeah, I think went really fun. well. I think yeah, that was a good commentary. Yeah. Now we just done the live action film yesterday. Yes, so. I did another commentary for the live yeah. action film where we talked about everything that John and I couldn't talk about uh, due to time. So we talked a lot <laughs> oh, yeah, about yeah, uh, yeah. kind of Van Damme's uh, uh, filmography at this point, his career, uh, and things like that. Oh, it's, yeah. So it's funny. Now we have like a complimentary um, uh, commentary to the same film. So only if only we could put that on the disc as well. And there would be like four commentaries uh, by now. That uh, Steven de Sousa, I keep saying his name in Brazilian, but I think it's Souza. Uh, but uh, he his commentary from the laser disc, man, that's uh, that has to be one of the most reprinted commentaries of all time because that's on the DVDs, oh, oh. it's on the the other Blu-rays, it's on the eighty-eight Blu-ray. So uh, and it's a good commentary. It's a bit of an art oh, to do uh, movie commentaries. It's a, it's a strange one. You'd think you just have to ramble and say whatever, but it kind of, it, it requires a weird focus, kind of like streaming a video game and talking. Oh, definitely. Yeah. So you can go off on massive tangents. You know, you think, oh god, I've got to stop. I've got to go back to talking about the actual film. Right. So. <laughs> Like the case when we were doing Street Fighter the movie, because you can talk about Van Damme's career and so forth, so which is always great, great fun to do. But you also have to sort of, you know, bring yourself back on track. Uh, but yeah, but we did all right. <laughs> yeah, it was fun. Yeah. Oh man. Uh, so you're gonna put on some some Pit Fighter now? You go from Street Fighter to Pit Fighter. Is it is that supported on Mister? Oh uh, no. No, it wouldn't I be, huh? Well, then, no wonder I didn't want to play the Mystery Day. Yeah, you know, that's that is something. That's for sure. But that that was at least. What's the other? F so they had Pit Fighter, and then they did that follow up. It's like the the Guardians uh, the of the Street Hood gang, Guardians of the that's Hood. Right, that's yes. the one with there's the most an incredible animation. There's an unreleased Judge Dread gang. That yes, which is from the same team. Oh, yeah. And, yeah, yeah, uh, yeah. Uh, too bad it has i think there is a prototype out there of it so i think so yeah but when it comes to digitizing movie games you really can't go wrong with the demolition man on the 3do I feel 3DO like specifically it's like sipping fine wine there when you dive into that one there's a stage where you do a like a street fighter style like 2d fight on top of cars yes two cars that's I right it. exactly it's incredible next level stuff so we'll take the stealth boats. Do it like the movie. Get the thunder in paradise. They should have had a section in the game where you control the boat or something. You know what yes, I, mean? be, I, I do agree. Fun. Yeah, I, I, I do agree with this. There should have been just a shoot 'em up, like an FMV shoot 'em up stage or something. Um, oh my it's... gosh, <laughs> dude! What if they did like the interludes that were like, uh, what is it, Thunder in Paradise in the CDI? Where they like use the camp, they move around as a video and it pauses, and then you do like you know uh, light gun segments, and then it moves around again. I think yeah, I think that right. would work. <laughs> Sounds familiar. I see uh, in the chat, by the way, newchallenger.net. Uh, would you be the same pe or it's the same people that did the tournament fighters turtles update? Because based on your post, it seems oh. like. That would be the people, and uh, great work on that. They also did Justice League versus TMNT, 
recently oh, in the Mugen awesome. engine. And uh, they're saying there that they will update the Street Fighter the movie arcade ROM with these backgrounds. Because, yes, uh, the backgrounds... Nice. Ooh, Whoa. That a bit loud. What happened? Wait, talk again. Hello? Whoa. <laughs> Is that really loud now? Oh, it's uh, way too loud. <laughs> uh, I'll turn that down then. Oh, oh, Audie, you turn him down. I turned him some... down. Uh... Well, it's nice to meet you finally. Uh, what happened? Did you I like? No. Did you I, have the mute I button? Feel, on I just, I just like no, no, not, not at all. I don't know why it was so quiet. That's very bizarre. So, ladies and gentlemen, this is uh, Oliver Harper. He's actually been here for a few minutes, but you might not have heard him. Uh, why don't you tell us why you're here? That that terrified well, okay, me. I... Like... <laughs> <laughs> I I did not expect that at all. I just like I'm just sitting here, and all of a sudden, it's just like, bam! It's like... <laughs> all right, now. Yeah, it's, it's, I suppose for those, I suppose for those who have tuned in just now, or didn't hear me earlier due to technical difficulties because discord is a pain sometimes um yeah sort of chatting about my new documentary here comes a new challenger about the basically which covers the uh, history of street fighter 2 celebrating its kind of cultural impact and its legacy and exploring everything about the game in terms of the merchandise the updates such, such as champ edition hyper fighting super and super turbo the live action film and the anime so we've been filming since from January of this year, um, and still have more interviews to do, of course, with Audi and John, which is happening in a couple of weeks. Finally, get to go out to Germany, uh, which is going to be a lot of fun because I've never been to Germany before. Um, oh, wow, okay, and it's yeah, yeah, I've, I've been like to France and Holland and uh, and Spain, but and Italy, never, never to Germany, so that's going to be you know quite an experience. And um, oh, we'll make it an experience, don't you worry. <laughs> So yeah, we have um, obviously additional interviews to film as well. So we just got a, we've got one confirmed today, which is pretty pretty amazing. Someone who yes, so was involved in making Street Fighter Two. We uh, oh. I actually worked behind the scenes a little bit on this film, uh, just to the transparency, I guess. Uh, I've been helping Ali with some other things other than you know just the B roll and uh, stuff like that. So I've been arranging some Japanese uh, guests or interviews for the film and today we finally got confirmation of perhaps one of the most important names to street fighters legacy so uh, i can't wait to actually say who it is as soon as uh, that email comes in huh but that's uh <laughs> we've been working a long time to get this secured and uh it requires some globe trotting in true street fighter fashion uh, it does it, it's going to it was not in japan it turned out uh, they, they should play that music on the plane when you fly like the you know the guile theme yeah. or no just like the uh oh, the you move between the stages yeah oh yes with the little do, jet do, do, sound do, do, do. that's right if only we were actually that fast that would be amazing true get on with elon musk i guess <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, people are saying that uh, Blanca looks crappy, and uh, something we discussed in both commentaries for the film is just kind of the uh, the troubles of creating Blanca in real life, uh, and especially in 1994. And uh, mm. the film version is different from the one in game because, so the way that this production worked for the arcade game specifically was that when they were not shooting on set they were shooting for the video game and so the stunt doubles would primarily do all of the um, kind of heavy techniques and then keyframes would be done by Kylie Van Damme uh, the other actors but uh, the Blanca situation was different different because the uh, super uh, super FX um, the SFX uh, special effects uh, makeup that was required for him was uh, pretty extensive. Uh, it was expensive, uh, despite what it looks mm. like. So the ga the game version is notably uh, downgraded, and it's not the same actor, I believe. I think it's the stunt double, and uh, it's not the guy who plays uh, Carlos Blanca in the film. So um, yeah, it's not the best version of Blanca. I don't know how many people play as Blanca anyway, though, other than Ono himself. 
Oh, see, I well, they, cut, actually... they cut out Blanca, didn't they, in the arcade? And yeah, they cut so... out DJ. Yeah, yeah. 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 So... yeah. Uh, do the time constraints, I think. Uh, and then for this game, because they're overlaying on the original sprites and modifying the original data to fit the sprite data, yep. uh, they could include them. So, And I mean, the arcade game, they pretty much had to work on that while the film was being made, right? So yep. And it had to... Uh, extra difficult. It had to... Uh, meet the launch of the film, which, you know, its schedule was all over the place. It was supposed to come out at some point. Uh, I think it was pushed through the holidays. And then uh, I forget if it beat Street, uh, Mortal Kombat or if it was the other way around. We discussed that in the commentary. But there was a race to the box office. So the, the game was just doomed from the start. They couldn't even use the source uh, code. They had to play the original yeah. arcade game and learn from it with which was the director from Capcom was, oh, if you play Super Turbo enough, you'll you'll get you'll understand what the essence of Street Fighter is in a few weeks on set in Thailand. So, I, I think Alan Noon, uh, who I've spoken with, but has declined to uh, show up and to talk about these things himself. Uh, I think he's kind of done with that subject due to just the difficulties of that production, unfortunately. Yeah, I think a number of the people involved making the arcade game have kind of moved on yeah and don't really want to talk about the arcade game anymore which is a shame because um you know some of this information about the how they made the game was kind of information from years ago like because alan noon had discussed it discussed it at quite great length in i think a number of forums yeah i'm and sure he's very apologetic forum. about it very yeah apologetic about it and um I, I, I don't, I, you know, I, I think the game got a bad rap. I don't think it's as bad as people thought it was at the time. Because I, I played it when it came out, and I thought it was amazing. But well, over the years, when you try to play it, it's 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 too fast. The hit the hit boxes are a bit weird. It's quite floaty when they get hit. It's, it's oh, not yeah. like a solid punch. Um, so that's what the home ports seem to sort of rectify, but they just don't look as good. I just kind of, no. I love the animation of the arcade. See, I think that's fundamentally the problem though, is that doing that kind of level of animation while maintain, I mean, first of all, they didn't have access to the source code. So they had to sort of fudge the gameplay a little bit, but I'm not sure original street fighter would have worked that well with that animation without like Capcom themselves. Like obviously with third strike and well, not just street fighter three in general, they've figured out a good way to yeah. make that work. But I think just somebody coming in and trying to match Street Fighter gameplay and then adding all those extra frames makes it... I can imagine that was pretty tough, especially with the time constraints. And, um, I, you know, I think they did a pretty good job considering all those limitations, but, mm. yeah. Uh, they were kind of... I would say that Capcom kind of set them up for failure, if oh, you know what I mean. They absolutely did, because there was... Um, and that, I think that's one of the reasons also why some of them are reluctant to talk about it. it's just that the feeling is that capcom probably felt a little bit intimidated by all this uh, not the fact not the quality of the game but just the fact that the game's being produced by an american studio unrelated to capcom there was always the fear of like well what if this is good like as good as they want to make it because obviously yeah. that then creates a bit of a i mean i can totally understand capcom's standpoint that that creates a situation where well now there's another team making equally good games they could go and make competition for another company or another movie or whatever so mm. from an ownership standpoint i i kind of understand the sabotage but it's stupid at the same time you know it's just you know capcom would have made ultimately all the money so who cares who made the game because uh, the movie made money so it's a it's a bit of a shame Oh, yeah. You've got to beat him one more round. I think, I think you're fighting Bison after this, right? I think, think there's one more fight and then there's Bison. Unless uh, the route I took skips Sagat because I already beat him. Okay. You're nearly there. You've got to fight Bison. You defeat him, don't you, right? And then you got to fight him again. Yeah, then he turns he into comes back. Psycho yeah. Bison or whatever they call it. So. That's right. So essentially, you fight him three times in the game. <laughs> you yep. Know? Talk about it's a bit, a bit of padding there. 
gotta gotta stretch it out somehow and uh, the other thing about the movie uh, load is that it runs on an internal timer so you have like 30 minutes i think to beat this mode so hmm. if you lose a match oh ah there we go if you lose a match oh, yeah. it counts down from so you can retry until the timer runs out basically so uh oh so, we got an sak fan in the chat the the King of Fighters owns Street Fighter, he says. Play, how, do you, how do you respond to that? So they play kind of differently. Uh, I don't yeah, like I it. So they're 2D fighters, but I enjoy them differently. So um, I like them both, to be honest. I mean, I prefer Street Fighter, but I also I, I do like King of Fighters. It is a fun game, and it mm. has its own style and feel. It's pretty awesome. Yeah. God, I, did have, I, did have, I, I did have a complete Japanese uh, set of King of Fighters 94 to 2000 on Neo the Geo cart. AES. Oh, yeah, man. yeah, yeah. That was early That's 2000s epic, when, I had, when I had, um, I think 2003. Yeah, 2003 I had that. I, that's when I had, that's when collecting Neo Geo stuff wasn't that bad. You know, you that could was, buy... that was like the only period where if you were in there, you were good. Any other time, mm -mm. <laughs> yeah, it changed. I, I, you can, you could get a mint version of king of fighters 98 japanese version for like 45 pounds yeah you know shipping was like 15 from like 15 was, pounds was, from japan it was all right you, you could do it you could afford it if you get like one game a month or two games a month you know you, you you're gonna build a sizable collection but now god n never i'd never jump back into the world of neo geo but why don't um, you have it is the question i would have what yeah, happened to you get rid of it money oh. <laughs> money you know when you sort of you spent too much on video games and then so, so later on you want something else like, oh i've got to i've got to sell these games because are they, you the telling me you're not always a world famous youtuber <laughs> making money well, next in november it'll be 10 years <laughs> oh, since okay. i started youtube oh wow, you've been 10 years congrats yeah it's kind of it's kind of amazing november yeah time flies <laughs> it's quite scary you know um, but yeah, it was fun owning an Neo Geo, but, but you kind of, you know, to save money, you got to kind of emulate some of this stuff or get one of those collection things, you know, Neo you Geo do, so takes space. Yeah. You know, that's the thing. I, I'm, I don't collect Wait. Neo Geo stuff, so mm. uh, I only have Neo, Neo Turf Masters MBS. That's the only Neo the Geo game. Yeah. Yeah. A lot of people just buy the Neo Geo, don't they? They get those MBS carts with yeah. like. Hundred like all the games on one. Uh, yeah, you can do that too. So <laughs> yeah, yeah, you know. Um, I I remember seeing the Neo Geo CD when it first came out in the import shop and seeing King of Fighters ninety four yeah. that had on it. It was just like whoa, it's amazing. But once that that fight finished, that loading time kicked in. So uh, like, oh, the interesting thing about Neo Neo Geo CD. Mm. Uh, so I have a CDZ here, and which oh, nice. does have the faster drive. The mm. original Neo Geo CD is like. That's very, one. Very that's one X, right? But and then CDC is two X, is it? Something, something like that. Well, I, I don't. It, it, but... it can basically transfer data quicker. Yeah. Because people thought yeah. it had a double speed CD so drive, which doesn't. The way the way I notice is that depending on the complexity of the game, it can either, like a lot of games that were ported to Saturn and PlayStation, the CDZ loads faster. Actually. Yeah. So it's quite comparable to that. Uh, and many of the games, especially the less complex games, actually, like, the whole game is just loaded into RAM. Like, you play, like, Magician yeah. Lord on there, and it just yeah. there's one loading at startup, and then there's no more loading, and it's perfect. And even stuff like Metal Slug, it's pretty much perfect. And, uh... So, this is when you get to, but, like, Last Blade 2 or King of Fighters so 99. So, there you... <laughs> yeah. Basically, the, all the late you fighting games... Yeah. Uh, there's just too much graphics data, and like you have to load too often, and the loading is too long, and it, it absolutely destroys the pacing. Like Last Blade Two on there is is horrendous. I can't recommend. It. <laughs> yeah, it game, actually though. might it might have to it might have to do with the cache. Rather, than, rather than, I, I don't know, yeah. but either way, like loading times in the CDZ are definitely much faster. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Um, but still, for those games, it's not enough. It doesn't save them. But even back in two thousand three or four, CDZ was still quite pricey. You know, oh, yeah. Yeah, it wasn't. It was never. It was never cheap. You know. No, well, Neo Geo. No. Man. Neo Geo was That's never a... designed to be cheap. We actually met with the no. uh, 
Uh, at E3 in 2019, we had an interview with, uh, I forget his name, Ben, was it? Uh, the yeah, former yeah, yeah. president of SNK USA. And he kind oh, of nice. explained this whole, he, he basically explained the whole business because he had a very close relationship to Japan and kind of dictated yes. a lot of the business uh, globally. And he was kind of explaining how this was designed to be a high-end machine, you know, at a higher price for a different clientele. So... Uh, it was kind of interesting to hear his stories. Uh, we're still sitting on that interview and a few others from E3. Uh, we, we'll find a way to use it in DF Retro at some point. We never released that, did we? No, I don't think so. I've never seen it on the, on the channel, so... Yeah. We, we still have it. And it's timeless, so... One day. He was a very nice man. We also interviewed Alexei Pachinov from Tetris fame. That was a fun interview as well. Was this stuff you've done in the last couple of years? Was this like ages ago? No, this is 2019 at E3. And, oh, sorry. Okay. Yeah, and uh, due to the like pandemic and stuff afterwards, that's why we haven't been able to kind of do anything with it. Uh, but I'm it's just I'm su I surprised myself getting stuff done during yeah. lockdown. You know, so it's pretty crazy. I've managed to <laughs> get interviews done and film things. Have to sort of it's it's as uh, you know you go out with a schedule and it sort of sort of gets changed a lot weirdly because when I made the action documentary a lot of actors writers and directors have more downtime than people that work in the games industry because they're still working nine to five jobs or doing crunch time you know working weekends yeah, so yeah. that was like trying to get you know, James Goddard was just like he's just like chock full of work you know so busy but you know once I finally sat him down chatted for like over two and a half hours <laughs> amazing stuff he said such a great guy yeah it's kind of amazing to think that you produced i guess you produced the whole documentary so far for street fighter mm. during the lockdown pandemic right you started oh, yeah. production yeah. during the pandemic so i mean Oof. um ah, yeah you pulled it it's off difficult uh but lots of sleepless nights so yeah <laughs> some of them you know um but it's been I, I, because I, was, because I loved Street Fighter 2 when I was younger. I'm so passionate about that that video game and everything around it. So it was just, it's made it a lot more fun, you know. So if, if you're not invested in it or you're doing it just as a job, you don't fully, you don't really go in 100%. So with this, I've just been like 150% all the way. Um, so it's been, yeah. So once, it, once, it, once you shot stuff and it, you know, it all looks great and stuff and graded and material, but once you sort of start editing clips together, editing interviews, seeing it come to life, then it's like, wow, this is kind of working. It's in your head, it's all like a puzzle, you know, so you've, everyone's, got, I've stuck to the script, I've written, you know, three act structure, but, you know, you don't always, when you interview people, um, they don't always give you the right answers or, or the answers you want, and you can't force people to say <laughs> this and that, you know, so you have to sort of oh, say, well, okay, man. tackle it from a different angle. So, um, thankfully, it's kind of my narrative is kind of all kind of clear throughout and yeah. uh, you have so no idea how much that resonates me with what you're saying right there <laughs> oh when yeah you interview a bunch of people and they all say slightly different things and then one mm. of those people doesn't like what everybody else said and uh yeah things kind of explode uh yeah. <laughs> i can say that much <laughs> it's it's an issue it's an ongoing it can issue be an in issue. the industry yeah it can be an issue. <laughs> it's like um, if someone's history of, say, Street Fighter 2 is different to yours, then it's kind of like, is my, you know, Merrimy not, not working properly or like have a different perspective on things? But thankfully, everyone's kind of like had the same experience of either how they played it in the arcade or playing it on the home consoles. Or even like for many, for many people, especially in the UK, who couldn't afford a Super Nintendo when it came out. Right, like 160 pounds with Street Fighter 2 that came bundled with it back then. I mean, oh. now, I mean, 160 pounds pretty cheap for a games console. I, I would, I would say so. But back then, that's very, it's a lot of money. So many of them went and played it on the Amiga, and it was like the game was 25 pounds at most, I'd say, and had to sort of make do and pretend it was good, you know. Um, well, an interesting oh, yeah. thing, Ju Julian Rignall had said that because we did that VHS strategy guide videotape that, that was given away with Nintendo magazine system 
and he said many people would just re-watch the tape because they, yeah. they couldn't afford a Super Nintendo. they just watch the tape over and over again. And <laughs> weirdly, it's one of, the work, one, of the, one of the sort of early players guides or let's plays, isn't it? Uh, it's oh. from 1992. Wait, did you say Rignall? Or 93. Julian Rignall. Oh, okay. Jazz. Yeah. Jazz yeah. Rignall, yeah. Yeah, we know him. We, I, I don't know him yeah, well, yeah. but no. uh, I mean, he, he worked, I mean, my boss, Richard, I mean, they worked close together on the, the old of magazines course. back in the day, right? So yeah, yeah, yeah. Richard Ledbetter and Jazz Rignall and all them. Man, there's, there's old magazines. I love it. Well, those guys <laughs> were like, you know, the, the legends of the sort of gaming press of the 90s, you know, along Every with time. Ed Lomaz and Paul Davies, yep. you know. So. Yeah, yeah. Loads of good, men. you know, loads of people that I kind of, you know, read about, or you know, when I was reading most magazines, think, oh, okay, that guy did this and that. And when you watch Games Master or something like that, Julian Rignall will be on there with his epic mullet, talking about <laughs> the latest, the latest video game. You know, uh, that mullet. Yeah, that. That's sadly, legendary. there's no mullet anymore. You know, the no. mullet disappeared years ago. You know, which is a shame. You know, the great Nick Kershaw style mullet. You know. Did you ever think so, about uh, interviewing Richard? I, I had that had crossed my mind. Yeah, there's there was because I'd interviewed Julian and he had reviewed the arcade right. and reviewed a Super Nintendo because Richard hadn't. So um, yeah. I thought, well, maybe he could. If I'd have, you know spoke to Richard, he may have a similar experience as well. So I, I don't be... know. It's hard to say how much Rich would have to say about Street Fighter at this point. Yeah, I, I, I guess like he would I have something to say about. Though. Yeah, I guess he would have something to say about Street Fighter and being announced for uh, Genesis or Mega Drive, because that was a big deal. Well, that's right? true. That's true. Yeah, that was a big deal uh, for Genesis. Yeah. Uh, so I mean, I remember because John, you'd done a, a video with Richard, like, uh, like a. Like a live show, hadn't you? You talked about old video game magazines. Oh, like yeah. Sega we versus did, Nintendo. We did that or... at uh, EGX. EGX. Right. That was fun. That's right. Because Rich was like, oh, I couldn't re he couldn't remember certain things. And you had to sort of like, <laughs> like stuff where he'd interviewed people at Sega. And he was like, really? You know, you're like, yeah, you were there. Oh, yeah. In the Dreamcast years. So that was quite amusing. But that was... Yeah, I love... <laughs> that was... <laughs> I love that when Richard just doesn't remember his own career. And we do. Yeah, 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 yeah. It actually happens quite a lot behind the scenes, too. It's like, <laughs> didn't you talk about this in, like, Mean Machines issue 130? And he's like, I don't know. Go away. Wait, so somebody <laughs> in the comments is mentioning that Street Fighter 2 supposedly was running on the Mega CD at some point? That, that was a... Uh, I Do think that was, only a, that was only never, a rumor, I, I think, in a British bag. Like I feel like that mm. probably wouldn't happen because, I mean, Capcom didn't support the Mega Drive that heavily. I mean, they had a few games and, you know, especially in Japan, the Mega CD was like a s super obscure add-on to the least popular console of the generation. So I can't imagine them being like, yeah, we should, should bring Street Fighter to this thing. And when you add in the loading times, I mean, the fact that when they did the PC Engine version, they opted to do it on a Hue card instead of a uh, the PC Engine CD and the CDs were more popular at the time. I think that kind of suggests that they thought Street Fighter on CD, bad idea. Especially with those yeah. slow drives. I mean, it does kind of work on Saturn and PlayStation, but I think those older machines, it wouldn't have necessarily been great. Although, I mean, Mortal Kombat CD, that's, that's actually, that turned out good. I think there was some rumors about the movie game turning up on the 32x i think i read something about that oh yeah it was always yes yeah, so the mega cd thing was a rumor i think that came out of british mag because i do remember this was brought up on another discussion we had about street fighter as well and i think it's just a british mag rumor that because i only heard the uh, brits talk about it and uh There's so many funny rumors they, they threw around back because then. back then Sing you know the me. magazines hey. just had to kind of throw whatever out there uh, for each editorial True. and there was no internet so mm -hmm. it's like um you know you could make up there was a great rumor. there's a great news article there's an interesting news article back in around 92 when street Fighter 2 did come out in the uk at christmas and people the parents were very annoyed how expensive the game was because it was like the most expensive cartridge at the time. I think it was like 60, I think they were charging £64.99 because it was a 16 meg cartridge. So, um, right. and there was, there was a BBC had 
had done a report on it about the cost of video games and Nintendo were just like, well, or probably Bandai actually, because Bandai were distributing, weren't they, Nintendo stuff um, at that period. So, yeah, it's, I, I, I need to find that sort of news, be, go through the BBC archive and see if I was can... It, wasn't it Mattel? Licensed, um, a report. Was it Bandai or was it Mattel? I've got the box over here, the Super Nintendo box, it'll probably say on there. Go get it. Do so like somebody current. somebody mentioned that they say Capcom didn't support the Mega Drive at all. They were all licensed and reprogrammed by Sega, and that's not really true. the The early games were all reprogrammed, so Strider, Ghouls and Ghosts, Forgotten Worlds, and a couple others, Final Fight CD. But the later stuff was more in house, although stuff oh, like Mega Man, The Wily man. Wars. Yeah. Oh so wow! It's got it was it's got Bandai. Bandai. Wow! Yeah, that box, by the way, is awesome. Oh, no, I love it's a thing I always wanted when I was a kid. Just... That is cool. Was that? Wow! How how's the console look inside? It was all a... yellow. <laughs> oh no! <laughs> oh no! My 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 friend thankfully sent me a spare Super Nintendo, which I could use to sort of photograph or film extra bits, which I needed to do. But the box itself was like mint condition because I spent months trying to find on eBay a box Super Nintendo with Street Fighter 2 and every box was just battered. The sides were all just, you know, falling apart. Um, things were missing inside. And that one came up and it was like pretty affordable price and uh, in mint condition. So uh, this like the Nintendo was just all yellow. Like it, it's covered in like nicotine or something. I don't no, know. No, 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 no. Uh, it's, it's the oxidation of the uh, yeah, yeah. plastic. plastic. Yeah. It's um, like most Amigas or Commodore 64s or Atari STs have gone yellow. You know. Most things, uh, yeah. Yeah, yeah, unfortunately. So what's the, uh, right. um, for the documentary, just keep it on brand here. Uh, what's been mm -hmm. like your favorite part so far to do? I mean, obviously the interviews, but which uh, interview really uh, made you kind of feel like, oh man, this documentary is it's going places? Well, Jerry Anser, you know, the star of Street Fighter Assassin's Fist, you know, yeah. amazing charisma, funny guy, lots of great stories. We chatted, for him, chatted with him for about 90 minutes. He had a lot to say on everything, really. Uh, James Goddard was just amazing really really nice guy you know he'd i think he'd done interviews before but never on camera about street fighter so this is kind of the first time he's ever been interviewed about the video game on camera which is kind of um he had some interesting interesting <laughs> he had some great yeah we had some great stories about how super street fighter 2 was developed and how capcom were a bit frustrated with the you know with hyper fighting and how they increased the speed and uh, come super it's all slow again which annoyed all the gamers um, Mick McGinty, who designed the box art, you know, for the yeah, Western that was, release. That, to. that was another one where I, I hooked you up with the uh, contact info. Yeah, is um, he? He is a fantastic storyteller. I could you know, listen to him all day talk about his career. Um, yes. So. so I never met him. Uh, I only had yeah. him due to having some mutual friends. But I've always heard sure. really nice things about him, and also he worked on yeah. so much stuff. So I remember. When we were talking potential guests, I was like, we should talk to him. I mean, what a cool get. Because, uh, yeah, yeah. you know, it's the same as like uh, when we talked to uh, Tom Du Bois and these other artists from yesteryear. They have cool stories about how they illustrated uh, box arts, which, you know, mm. doesn't get told. So for this yeah. documentary, it was a perfect because opportunity. He, he was, uh, Mick McGinty was like, he wasn't a fan of the Japanese stuff at first now he loves it and appreciates yeah. it but it was you know it's a completely different style to what was going on and he'd come from doing movie posters yeah. beforehand yeah. he'd done Rambo 2 and uh uh what's it how you meet the Henderson Mary Harry meets the Hendersons yes Harry and the Hendersons yeah Harry and, Harry and the Hendersons that's yeah, no, yeah. Movie. yeah. yeah, it's, yeah. <laughs> they haven't remade that oh, yet thank god they haven't no. <laughs> it's coming I'm sure now it is when i was when i interviewed him he was uh because we did it over you know zoom when i was interviewing mick mcginty because he's you know out in, out in america yeah. and he, he looked at the back of my webcam because what's that it's like it's all my the masters of the universe drew strews and poster he was like right. oh, that's that's a poster he was like you know so, <laughs> i thought that was great 
I love your American accent. Now that's a poster. <laughs> Have you completed this game or what? What's going on? No, I actually, <laughs> yeah. I, I kept talking too much and uh, some people were like, oh, you need to do this and that. There's lag because uh, I'm not splitting my signal into a CRT or anything. So doing a charge character with lag isn't easy. So I was like, oh, I'm not yeah. going to do the flash kicks. And uh, I'm not a very good Guile player to begin with. I'm not going to make excuses here. Uh, okay, I'm, not, I'm not a big uh, Guile guy. So now we're just doing the uh, street battle mode and then we'll switch over for a few minutes to uh genesis and then watch your latest Wrap it up. yeah watch your oh, latest yeah. promo and uh have some fun so yeah yeah these interviews uh one thing i have to say about your documentary because um we we started talking when you announced it with someone who kind of clued me in it was like you will probably yeah. like this guy he's done a ton of retrospectives on 80s action films he's very much like up your alley so check him out and i watched some of your videos and i was like yes i like his stuff <laughs> very much so and then uh figured uh, based on your pitch that was really what did it because you wanted to talk about the cultural impact of street fighter rather than talking yeah. about you know um as you mentioned earlier i don't know if he had sound or not at that time but talking mm. about the uh competitive scene talking about yeah the arcade scene like doing that specifically has been told and i don't uh sorry to say but i don't find the competitive street fighter no arena to be very interesting uh, i'm not a big fan of a lot of the people in it uh, i find it's it to its be own a, thing it's its own thing but it's also a very hostile and kind of weird uh community yeah, yeah. which i'm just not it's interested niche, in it's very know. niche and it's uh, a pocket it's of less about it's, it's less about the game and more about the those the players. people specifically playing it mm. which yeah you know totally different and there i think there's it's legitimate it's, it's stories integral, there, though. yeah it's integral to the history of street fighter and yeah. we have talked yeah. about it in True. the documentary but it's not of course the focus the focus is everything else around it you know because i think if it went down the tournament aspect it wouldn't be doing anything differently and me personally because the tournament aspect never spoke to me because i i, I didn't know anyone who competed in tournaments in the uk or had friends our tournament was the bedroom or the lounge you know we played with our friends on home computers or consoles you know that even though they were kind of inferior ports of the arcade but it was still that was our tournament you know so to me when i saw the other documentaries i thought they were well produced but they didn't speak to me and my history yeah. of street fighter and i kind of wanted to sort of tap into my history and, and whenever i told my pitch and idea to everyone else they're like yes that is what i want to see so everyone who's kind of jumped on board with this and even people who have declined to be interviewed this documentary like they they love the idea but you know not everyone wants to be on camera and those who you know do appear on camera you know have a lot of interesting stuff to say yeah. so i was you know i was really happy <laughs> that it's kind of turned out the way it's, it has yeah, so one of the comments is that the fighting community is very different in every country. Oh, absolutely, but most of the yeah. documentaries have focused mostly on the American Evo scene and then a little bit on the Japanese scene with uh, Daigo and whatnot. And I'm not saying mm. that, as I said, there's stories to be told there, and but they've been told, sure. first of all. Uh, there's already several documentaries on them, and it's just not a story I'm interested in telling. Like so, for me to well, join this project, it wasn't what I wanted to talk about. That's that's the thing about doing anything, any of these types of video projects, is that you know a lot of topic, pretty much any topic that you choose to cover, somebody else has probably already covered. Yeah. So you kind of have to find what interests you first and foremost. Mm -hmm. You being yeah. the person who's starting the project or your your team, right? Like you have to pick a topic that's interesting that you can put your own spin on uh, for best yeah. results. And yeah, yeah. well, for sure. You have to also, you know, if everyone's, you know, I'm sure there's go on YouTube and you can find the making of Street Fighter 2 videos. And um, so everyone's kind of covered the subject, but you have to sort of, it's always, it's always fun to, you know, go over this sort of similar subject, but you have to tackle it, tackle it in a different way and approach it differently yep. to sort of tell something new. Um, and that's what I've kind of geared a lot of the questions to my interviewees to sort of get them to talk about something different than just sort of instead of just like what do you think of that what do you think of this you know so um i think um 
I think might, I mean, we're aiming for like a March release date of next year. So cool. might, in about two weeks, we'll weekly start doing the, the rough cut of the documentary. So uh, once we've got that in place, then it's just going to be drop and drag in the other interviewees and <laughs> sort of fill in the gaps, as it were. Um, Speaking about like organizing all that stuff, um, mm. how, how do you guys, do you do a transcription of all the interviews? Uh, do you have somebody do the transcription or do you use like an AI generated transcription or do you not use any at all? We had thought about doing that at first, but one of the editors, uh, Rob James, he had the task of watching all the footage and making yeah. notes along the way. <laughs> it took okay. him about a week or so. Uh, so you have to sort of, you know, he was really, really, you know, uh, careful with everything he wrote. So it was just like very detailed information about everything. So, and everything's kind of now, I think he'd uh, sort of marked all the footage anyway. So when you go to go into the edit, you can find the points where you need to, you know, or certain subjects. Cool. So yeah, he did a great job of that. But it's, yes, it's not, it's not the most fun part having to do all that no. work. But, you know, so we could have transcribed it, but um, I think it was, I think, he was also he's got, he's also co-editing it as well. So having to go through it anyway, make notes. It's helpful for him because he can just like, you know, when it comes this, to the edit, he kind of kind of knows where everything is. This stuff takes that that part of things takes a long time, and like I guess mm. a couple two or three years ago, I filmed a bunch of footage for a, a pretty big interview documentary piece on another developer in the UK. And I never actually got to finish it or do anything with it. And it's always this task of actually organizing the footage that's kept mm. me from actually getting it done. Uh, Cause that's that, that step you have to take. Cause you know, it's going to be a huge time investment to actually yeah. get it done. And Audi knows the one I'm talking about. He, yeah. I've, I've been transcribing some of it actually. Uh... So he's been, hel he's been helping in the background so that someday we can actually do this. <laughs> So we'll get there. We'll get there. It's always good to have a you know a good team around you. You know, I I had edited the last documentary I made, and I didn't want to wear too many hats again. But I've kind of worn too many hats again on this one. Always happens. Doing most of the most of the producing and then directing and then trying to and do the interviews as well. Um, and I, I, I had help from some really talented cameramen to sort of take the reins in some cases um, in America and they did a wonderful job so um, yeah I'm really kind of pleased how everything's sort of I've managed to get stuff done you know considering yeah. COVID you know and ha um, having having a team to help at all makes such a difference mm. I find I mean I oh, yeah. figured that out this year with you know since we started the, doing the more DF retro stuff uh, for Patreon you know now, now I've had Audi helping out like yeah. on all the the main projects and uh it's just a lot more it's a less stressful more enjoyable experience if you will mm. when you have somebody yeah. actually working with you on something rather than having to do everything by yourself yeah uh, oh definitely it's because a long you, you all come from youtube you will, you will come from youtube where you're expected yeah. to essentially do everything yourself right yeah edit do the voiceover and that's it and that's kind of you have, essentially have to become you know, a Swiss Army knife for video production. And I don't generally do stuff on camera. You know, I just do the voiceover. So, you, John, you, you've got to just, you've got to be on camera and then shoot know, that yeah. and make that and light that in a correct way and also do the lines correctly. So it takes a lot of time. So, yeah, it does. you know, having someone come in and edit the stuff for you is going to make it less of a, less stressful for you. Yeah, definitely. Yeah, doing on camera stuff is... Uh, it's hard it's hard you have to get the lighting right you have to get the, all the lights right and i'm someone that can talk for hours without stopping off you know just off the top of my head but if you put a script mm. in front of me i can't even get the first line out it was something <laughs> we got painfully aware of when we produced uh several videos but like bubsy i remember i had to do that off the cuff i was i just yeah, told you, john like you didn't just, use lines for that you just talked and that was basically one take. Uh, there was a couple it times. Was, that's, a, yeah. that's a required skill, you know, having to being able to talk without messing up your lines or tripping over your words. You know. Um, yeah, I, I generally script, don't trip you know. uh, when I do off the top of my head. But if you put a script in front of me, I I would trip all the time and uh, yeah. completely fall apart. So generally, I'm not a fan. Sometimes you have to, you know, with. Uh, 
uh, the uh, PlayStation video, we just kind of had to because it had to follow a certain structure. We had to time it down. Uh, yeah, exactly. So that was, uh, but that worked pretty well, though. I think the segments we did together there were, or individually, uh, worked really well. I did well, that. Was, that was your Europe. that was your your crash course in doing video stuff yes. in a video like that, right? Yes. Filming and that was <laughs> including getting new equipment to even make that work. I'm seeing, uh, I've been seeing quite a few comments of uh, dreams come true. I've been following both channels for years. Yes, it is the uh, team up of Oliver oh, Harper and Dio. Oh, shit. The, uh, Yo, Yo, Yoshi is in the house. Oh, Yo, Yo, Yoshi is <laughs> in the house. Get the memes. Uh, he's here. Get the memes. Yo, oh, Yo, Yo yeah. Show is on every stream from everyone. Just uh, so. We love it. <laughs> yes, of course. We're very happy to have you here. But. As, as an aside to this, some somebody asked about uh, the PC version of Sonic Colors and how it wasn't in the video, and they wanted to know how it compares. And it's that's my because uh, I actually I actually just got Sonic Colors PC code like three hours ago, oh. um, so too late. But I did actually load it up briefly, and it was not good on my PC. Uh, this was stuttering horribly. Uh, it crashed when I tried to quit. It doesn't support ultra widescreen, so. I'm gonna give that a pass right now, but I'll have to, oh, nice. I'll have to look at, I'll have to look at that again. But first impressions were not good, so. So anyway, I'm gonna, to... I'm gonna change game quickly. Uh, All we're right. Play a little bit of remastered, and then check out the latest promo from Oliver's documentary, and talk a little bit more about the documentary itself, and then uh, oh. we'll be on our way. But uh, yeah, gentlemen, hold fort. It will take me right. a minute or two. Sure. Are you playing the was it the remasters on the Mega Drive? What was that? Did you play that before? I can't remember. Mm, good question. That's I think, I think we, I feel like we played that. I think it was during the uh, the New Year's stream. That's right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's pretty good. I think it's like the audio was kind of corrected, like because in the the old Mega Drive one, everyone's all the voices sound like they're underwater. Very sort of. Not particularly clear. That's right. <laughs> My favorite game, though, is definitely No Signal. Check if. I see this stupid <laughs> thing all the time with this capture stuff. My goodness. <laughs> oh, man. Um. So, yeah. This is... It's it's funny that we do this and just roll with the uh, Street Fighter the movie, but I kind of feel like that's we've covered that enough now on the channel. Hopefully, yeah. people can see that it's like not nearly as bad as you might have expected. No, no, I don't think it's, so. It's it's totally fine, as we saw. Okay, so we got the. Uh, guess it's the mega no yeah it's the mega sg this is the mega sg with the mega sd that's with not mini SD. at all uh -oh. <laughs> oh you're updating the firmware i guess i forgot to do that but it will take a few seconds okay as long as it doesn't yeah, delete all my games the full experience yeah if only mister had that street fighter the movie core but i suspect that would be pretty difficult uh Oh yeah, that, that hardware mm. is pretty bespoke. Oh, uh, ring the bell. The word has been spoken. Mm -hmm. Ring the bell. I love I ringing the movie. The, bell. the movie arcade can be emulated quite well now. I think years ago, yeah, in it it, 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 it name, it's it's fine now. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We're talking about the FPGA support, which basically is yep. a reverse engineering of the original chips, uh, oh, right. and then accurately performed but uh the main the main version is not bad we used that for the uh the f retro launch episode that's right so so chaps did you uh what did you talk about while i was gone all um, those minutes that's street fighter the movie is not so bad oh that's been the discussion enough. the entire episode of this live stream yeah so <laughs> exactly so I saw Pyron was out uh, showing off his uh, enhanced Mortal Kombat sprites as well over yes, on Twitter. Yes, he is working on that, isn't he? Those look pretty good. 
<laughs> Excited. Pyron is uh, an amazing uh, asset to the uh, Mega Drive community. Absolutely. And the emulation community. I, I mean, exactly. I love that there's people doing this stuff. Okay, here we go. So, Ollie, are you familiar with this version of the game, Remastered Edition? I think. I think. Well, we, I was. We, did, we, we played this stream dude. last year, didn't we? We played. Oh, it was yeah, the yeah, when yeah. we did the New Year's stream and we had uh, Ollie on. That's right. This is this is yeah. what I was playing uh, during that. That's part. right. Well, it's, yeah, it's quite a good, you know, remaster of stuff, isn't it? I mean, it was improved audio, and um, I think there's some audio. color improved. changes. Yeah, improved. Yeah, yeah, you did a lot colors. of colors. It basically yeah, yeah. is the definitive version of Street Fighter on Mega Drive. 16 bit. Yeah. So is this a champion? Because it didn't, did it have hyper fighting there or whatever it was, turbo? It was just like, it's just a Mega Drive. Uh, one, isn't it it? Had... Jazzed up. Yeah. It's there based was on. Fight... Uh, yeah. Hi hyper fighting, right? Yeah. And then there was also Super uh, yes. released on the Mega Drive, which had the super right. garbled sound. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. That's a, that's a massive one. cartridge, though, wasn't it? it was, yeah, and it turns out that I think people have looked at it, and it's it's just like the way they did their sound driver is poor. Yeah, or Capcom like that. was and, not; they didn't use a good sound driver for. Uh, yeah, no, whereas you know, Konami. Capcom. So I think there's a question, John, the, in the oh, yeah, super so, chat. Yo, yo, Yoshio. He says, "Did you know that?" The Lollipop Super Bubsy Bundle. It's an yes. updated version of Super Bubsy in Germany that includes specific drivers for a range of GPUs. Yeah, so is that true? Because I know of the bundle, but... Uh, I don't know about any... the driver. So the driver thing's weird. As we discover, I mean, you've been firsthand witnessing on my own retro PC here yeah. with Windows 98 that Super Bubsy is very sensitive to the exact graphics card that you use in a weird way. Yeah. It only worked on the ATI cards. <laughs> properly every other card it was either choppy or had visual glitches uh but so maybe there's something to it i don't know that game is is wild absolutely yeah uh i love playing through that though because i never had uh, the chance to when i was younger and i've had that game for a long time it, it, it looks good it looks good you did quite well so, uh, Ollie, what is actually your favorite version of Street Fighter? Because now that's the oh, that's the million dollar Ooh, question. Okay. It is, isn't it? I think. Um, I mean, I love the World Warrior, right? Because of its like, I like how the levels were, like, because they changed the color palette for Champion uh, Edition. I just like how I don't know, Ryu stage looks, and um, just a little, a little uh, quirks of it all. But Hyper Fighting is definitely the best. For me, I mean, Super Turbo is amazing, right? It's called Super Moves, but I, it's um, it's, I still find it slightly unbalanced. I think Hyper Fighting was so perfect, and how balanced it was. Um, so I, I love the Hurricane Kicks in that version because in Super they sort of go this kind of weird arc when they do a super like a regular Hurricane Kick in the air. In like Hyper Fighting, just jump in the air, Hurricane Kick straight across, you know, and you can, it's really good to combo. And I like the speed of it. Um, yeah. So with like you know World Warrior Champion Super, I think it's kind of a bit slow. Um, but I love all of them really. I think Super Regular Super Street Fighter Two is probably, I don't know, maybe the weakest out of the bunch because mm. um, it had so much potential to be much more. And uh, Super sure, Turbo sure. should have been the one they should have put out after Hyper Fighting. But um, yeah, well, I mean, I think, if you have yeah, a 3DO, Two Turbo is the best. Yeah, yeah the three Ds are answered. Yeah, yeah. Or an FM <laughs> it was, it was. The 3DO yeah. version, I love that version. It's fascinating. Uh, it's so close. Like, It's just the lack of parallax scrolling that yeah. really bothers me. Mm. But everything else about yeah. it is pretty awesome. And I think like, if you played that, I didn't actually... I mean, I did not own a 3DO at the time. I do now. Mm. But I remember seeing it and thinking like, whoa. Uh, it they looked okay, had a... perfect back then. You know, yeah, all you'd exactly. Because all mega drive and snares by so. eye you'd think it was and then you hear the audio i mean they used to have a 3do kiosk set up that i would play that on and it was just amazing, amazing. at the time yeah i love the music it's, it's so good um and it, i think did they ever release it as an album it was actually officially released as a cd uh, do audi do you know which one 
Sorry, I was focusing the, on the match. The, the FM Town soundtrack, was that ever released on its own as a soundtrack CD? Uh, later on. Not at the time, but now there is uh, in the compilation. Right. part of the Hyper, I think it's part of the Hyper, or Hyper Street Fighter 2, whatever it was, or anniversary thing. The yeah. 15th anniversary, I yep. think. So, exactly. Do you know, who did that music? It wasn't like T's music or something, right? Uh, that was uh, the, no, uh, that was arranged by Scion. Uh, which was a internal guy at Capcom. He used to work for Konami for a while as well. Uh, mm. Worked on Super, but it's internally arranged. Uh, okay, with, so uh, Alf they didn't Lila. get Alf Lila. To, oh, it was with Alf Lila. Yeah, yeah with Alf Lila. Okay. Yeah, okay, okay, cool. Alf Lila though is a rotating lineup, much like uh, the Kokea, Kokea Club from Konami. Yeah, yeah, yeah exactly. So, it's a... But That's you're, more of, you're more of a Zuntada and Gameadelic. Gameadelic was yes. uh, Data East's uh, internal uh, oh, yeah. band. <laughs> so. and, you, and you know, as we discussed years ago, it's still sad that we never got the Hot B house band. It's so much missed That's... potential. <laughs> uh, oh man, I remember for a few <laughs> years ago when talking about these bands, um, I was at the Twitch headquarters in San Francisco because uh, I had a friend that worked there. So I was there oh, talking nice. to uh, one of the um, one of the people in charge of like events, and this is a this was 2017, when Twitch 2018 when Twitch was looking to expand into live events and concerts and things like that, and they were wondering if maybe my connection with Japan or something could kind of you know come uh, to service there, and I yeah. mentioned I really you know what would be cool is to do. A, uh, a, re- a rebirth of a uh, game music festival we should get a lot of the actual like bands that are active in video games today and do like a video game music festival for twitch because it's video games it's music and i think that would be cool and uh, i was met with a lot of mm-hmm. stares of just kind of like i know i have no idea what this guy is talking about anymore but thank you for your enthusiasm <laughs> But uh, I remember that was kind of my pitch to Twitch officially. Uh, and I, def- I mean, they did they did expand. I mean, Twitch is huge today. But at yeah, the time, of course. Uh, they hadn't really started doing much. It was before the Bob Ross marathons and this kind of stuff. So, man, so some real quick, a lot of people in the chat have been asking: Is has anybody made like a, a readily available repro cart of this version of Street Fighter? Do you, yeah. do you know? Uh, so actually, when Pyron released this, uh, I made at least uh, what Pyron considers to be the box art for the game. So I oh, sent yeah. him all regions for that. So I don't know if they were ever printed. I have one here, uh, but I made the Brazilian uh, cover. I made a Japanese and an American one. And That's a awesome. European. Oh, right. So technically everything is there. I think he was waiting on manual files. So whether or not those manuals oh. were finished, I don't know. But uh, I would some, love to see that. Some Suntata would be neat, someone says. Well, if uh, I stand up a bit and look at my t-shirt, we've got some Suntata. So Excellent. My body <laughs> was ready a, for that. We also have a super chat from Nalaska who says, Nice to see my favorite homie streaming again. As always, stay safe and of course stay retro. Why, thank you. And yeah, we Swedish, right? Yeah, so looks yeah, like not it. Paul. it's a uh, S E K. Is it Swedish? Yeah, Swedish kroners. Yeah, okay. Don't worry, Seems it does right. have value. <laughs> he sent about ten dollars. Yeah, we'll, ha- we'll, we'll, ha- we'll have Price to do. Dollars, yeah. We'll have to do more streams as we get into the fall, I think, because uh, you know, kind of fell out of it for a while. Yes, and uh, although we have we have done some streams for patrons, of course, but not too many public streams lately. So, no, uh, no, yeah. uh, uh, I love doing these streams. I'm getting better at it, and honestly, I think I'm better at as I mentioned earlier. I'm, I'm probably a little bit better at these interviews and uh, these off the cuff streams rather than the uh, scripted planned videos. Uh, I I know my limits, people. So I I, do, I enjoy doing this, even though I do. Uh, really uh, appreciate and enjoy the feedback I got for the uh, video I did on No More Heroes. People were very nice to me, even though you don't need to be, uh, for doing that. But uh, 
it was fun to do benchmarking for the first time and it was very interesting as well it, it was certainly a game that needed yeah. benchmarking <laughs> so. oh yeah absolutely and that was the video turned out good so yeah you know. thanks and, and yeah it's fun but no i i know i know what you mean i i know you prefer doing this kind of stuff anyway and that's totally cool too I, so. I, i'm more of a community guy um yep. you know i like telling stories and i like uh that's why I like doing these commentaries with Ollie as well, and John, for that matter. I think we've done one at least. Uh, we have yeah, plans we just of doing more. Street Fighter one. We have I'd love to, to do more, more sometime, but yes, yeah, yes. that was a uh, the Street Fighter one was fun. That was fun. And uh, certainly, we'll do more with Ollie. We've already announced uh, that we yeah. will be doing one uh, soon. Uh, though uh, the episode, uh, it's not out yet, so I don't know if I can reveal the future stuff. So I'll let Ollie decide what we can say and not say here. Okay. Well, that is fine. And then, cause we, obviously, me and Audie had just done... Well, we, last week, we did the animated movie. Um, and yesterday, we did the live-action film. Obviously, Audie and John have already done a commentary to 88 Films' his Blu-ray release. But uh, me and Audie got to talk a little bit more uh, about the live-action film. And next week, we're going to talk about the cartoon series. A select number of episodes, which Audie's going to choose um because it's a terrible yeah, saturday that, morning one uh, yeah after that then you're doing the legend of chun li oh God. We, okay this will come up <laughs> uh i guess it has to be done at this point doesn't it because uh, we, we've Not done really. everything else <laughs> and that one is actually Let, legend of chun li since kind of john suggested it why don't you and john do legend of chun li <laughs> let's turn the table by watching that you know um Oh, yeah, Mortal Kombat good. commentary. So, uh, I've actually... I have a story of that. I have stories about everything. Uh, 2009, a Swedish company was starting up... It was a new startup that was uh, associated with uh, some... I forget what the mother company was, but some entertainment company in Sweden. And they were going to release cult right. films. It was kind of be like... Uh, video game movies, cartoons, anime. They were trying. They were gonna do all this stuff. Uh, they hired yeah. me to do the Mortal Kombat commentary at that time because at that time uh, I was doing other work, which I was famous for, like uh, uh, concert series and uh, like video game music concerts and Destructoid and these uh, video game websites. So I was hired in then to do an English um, commentary for Mortal Kombat, the original film. And yeah. uh, I recorded it in the studio up in Stockholm. They went bankrupt. Uh, like, oh, no. probably two weeks later, before even releasing their first film, because they had tried to license an, a Japanese wow. anime, which they paid for and then ran out of money <laughs> because oh. they couldn't do the production. Oh, no. So that, that commentary is somewhere. It's lost uh, it, to something. I somewhere. don't have it, but uh, Stefan, if you're out there and watching this, um, <laughs> you're you're allowed to release it on YouTube or anywhere. Because I remember being very proud of that time. There was a famous Hong Kong uh, film commentary guy at the time that uh, sent me a lot of advice, and uh, I, I took his advice at that time and uh, did what I felt was a pretty good job, and uh, never got released. But I think John and I, for the Patreon, will definitely do a fan commentary for Mortal Kombat and yes, release as an MP3. absolutely must. Yeah. <laughs> My goodness. Yeah, this is By the way, we, discussed. we have oh. three Super Chats, so it's, it's time. So first of all, from Oneida, Oneida uh, following your discussion of the FF Pixel remasters, would be cool to hear more about the PSP versions of 1 through 4. Oof. Yes, those are cool, but that that's a lot of time though to do Final Fantasy games. I think we can <laughs> definitely. What we can do is we can definitely discuss it again in the directs as they keep coming out. Uh, yeah, that's 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 a good point. Something like uh, that. I will just say quickly about that is that I'm actually uh, fairly impressed with. I mean, these are remasters that don't necessarily focus on creating the biggest graphical fidelity leap but they're there to create a pretty substantial jump in just yeah. uh, quality of life changes which i find i think they fascinating change the work they did is good but the technical side is not yeah 
it so still it's basically so basically all of the all the work that was done was let down by some poor tech unfortunately mm. uh That's but we also have one from the ozone nightmare of course friend Good of the show you, okay fellas so how much moose does guy go through a day on that hair uh what do you guys think do you know what that hair is supposed to be no no one if you look at what a sonic boom looks like when you do a, when you look at a jet plane the exhaust from the jet will have that oh my god what will have that uh, shape so his <laughs> hair looks like the actual sonic boom of a he wouldn't be using plane. moose he'd be using a lot of hairspray you know. i guess so maybe he he might the have started that trend about using the, the super glue on the head uh, you know yeah. just keep it in place it's the when only he, way we grew up in the 80s all of us and uh, i remember you know when the real punkers were around right the punk generation the bad guys in final fight basically uh i remember there was a punk mm. that lived in my town and he used egg whites for his like mohawk thingy Ugh. yeah, yeah he's he egg whites. Stank. Oh, yeah he, he yeah. always smelled bad he always smelled bad and I, i'm pretty sure it wasn't maybe not always the eggs i mean probably some alcohol in the picture too but I just remember from as a kid, I always told my dad, I was like, oh, that guy stinks. My dad was just like, in more ways than one, son. He, well, he was not a fan <laughs> of, of that guy. So Did we have other we have super chats? Two, we have two more. One from Rodrigo Silva, who we know, of course. Audie, you promised me a, about 2000... You promised me about Sonic 2006 DF Retro or Sage 2021... I deleted my Twitter account, but the promise still holds. Don't so break. Uh, so we talked about Sage, uh, the Sonic uh, yeah, fan I festival do... thingy. Uh, I think, again, this is something where we can live stream something and try out yeah, different that's, projects. That's um, probably the way to do it. I could download them all on my PC and just get ready and play them live and talk about them because, yeah. man, it's just I, I think we're all getting bowled over with just so much work lately it's very hard right. to keep up and do everything we want to do so that's the problem for sure uh yeah. next up then we have from chan john Wen. Yes. says hey df love these streams uh can't wait for when we can share a certain saturn translation mm. next week uh, you, we are doing we can a... try out yes next Go week ahead. we are doing another stream uh which uh, i'm sure nian will join us and they are talking about a very exciting <laughs> new project they're working on for a classic Saturn game that oh. when they approached me and John about it, we were like, yeah, yes. And we will be able to show that off. So that will be next Wednesday or next uh, Tuesday. So uh, stay tuned. Excellent. Excellent. I guess what oh. it is. You can try. <laughs> you can try. try. Well, Police Noughts has been done, hasn't it? Yes. By uh, Grand is it? Is it Grandia? Oh. Grandia or something like that, that has also been done. Shining Force sequels. Well, that has also been done. <laughs> well, he's saying, hope you can try out the twin stick controls we added in. There's a hint mm. for you. That's the hint. Twin stick. Twin sticks were like for virtual long, weren't they? Yeah. Um, absolutely. I can't think. No. No. <laughs> I'm, I'm, I'm baffled <laughs> outside of my sort of. Uh, knowledge of this those saturn games but, that um, needed translating we should probably start wrapping down guys soon i think almost at the final mm -hmm. guy i'm after this yes then i gotta i gotta run shortly but yeah. but uh while we slowly wind down here uh yeah so your project oliver uh john and i of course being interviewed i'm helping you behind the scenes but uh for of those course. who joined maybe a little bit late uh let's again just kind of talk shortly about what it is and then kind of what people can look forward to and where of course they can help out get the blu-ray and uh, what uh, what kind of extras will we maybe see on such a blu-ray well yeah i'm you know here with you guys chatting about my new documentary here comes a new challenger you know kind of exploring the history of street butter 2 and its cultural impact um you know explore all the updates to the game live action movie the anime the merchandise the cartoon um estimated release date is march of next year so we're kind of halfway through everything now so short about 14 interviews more interviews to do with obviously john and audi in a couple of weeks and ryan hart who's a you know, pro gamer and guinness world record holder he lives in germany as well so 
got to shoot three that week. Um, it's going to be a lot of fun. And uh, extras wise, you know, for the Blu-ray, we've kind of me and my cameraman have thought about there's a couple of featurettes we're going to include deleted scenes and um possibly some other bits and bobs but with documentaries you know you also you couldn't provide a commentary that would be really weird i think <laughs> you couldn't provide one for yeah. your own film that would be a bit strange i've seen it. um why but... not i i would i would love to <laughs> i mean see that. john and i can do the commentary you could oh. do if you want to see yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah absolutely um, oh yeah that would be cool uh, there's a couple of you know ideas i've got so yeah um but those 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 extras will be confirmed um kind of closer to the release date but you can find if you want to get a copy uh, or pre-order a copy um, for digital copy or a um a blu-ray you can find the link in the description of the video i hope um it will so, on screen so yeah on screen exactly so it ends on the 19th of september uh, your chance to back the project and have your name in the credits um, I think we do have another teaser we can show, I think. Or do you, you'd... Um, yeah, we, yeah. Have, off, you? we have the final teaser. Now let me just beat Vega here, and then we shall... There I do. I did beat Vega. You'll win. Excellent. So... But we do have some more names to announce soon. And one, well, one, which confirmed today, which we can announce once soon. everything's fully yeah, sorted. Uh, yeah. Yeah, as soon as I get the email to kind of like get his schedule and then uh, get mm -hmm. his uh, details. Uh, but yes, he did agree to join us. And uh, what I can say about it is that it's someone that I've been helping um, Oliver get in Japan. That was uh, probably one of the most essential people to Street Fighter's legacy. Yeah, uh, oh, definitely. It was a bit of a pipe dream to get him, but then uh, <laughs> I managed to eventually get him to agree so now we have him and we are working a few other uh japanese guests japanese uh, japanese guests and actually <laughs> to give him a shout out alex and neil friend of the show has been helping me um, yeah. set up a few of them uh -huh. so uh the, uh the the one i got today i have to say i got by myself so i'm pretty proud of that but uh yeah, yeah alex, well done matey i was very happy with that Great yeah, results. Was, uh, I was getting nervous that like nothing was going to bear fruit here after so much time, <laughs> but uh, it finally happened. So yeah, that name will be huge, and uh, will I think kind of bring everything together. I mean, in terms of uh, people talking about legacy culture, uh, I think this guy for sure uh, will Definitely. be kind of yeah. like a binding uh, thing, and of course, Benny Orkidas is in the documentary good old benny uh, oh benny yeah, the jet yeah, yeah. oh yeah. We, yeah we are all huge fans of benny on this channel uh, big time john discovered him very recently because i've been showing yeah, john man. Uh, old hong kong action oh Jackie, my god and he's incredible he's so yeah, incredible we watched the wheel some meals and john was just like oh, that, this is the most amazing incredible yeah, yeah, that that end yeah, fight yeah, yeah, is yeah. the best end fight jackie ever did i don't it's, i mean brad it's, allen it's an, rest in peace uh, was very good <laughs> but um i think benny was like pound for pound so similar that like the fight just turned out spectacular oliver it's been amazing having you on talking street fighter talking your documentary uh you have one final clip uh which we'll, we'll watch and then we'll come back to say goodbye so uh okay. do you want to introduce Ooh. the clip the, uh, well, yes, this, this next clip is about the uh, port of Street Fighter 2 to the Super Nintendo and how people kind of reacted when they first experienced it for the first time. Cool. Console version was being discussed, and the fact that was even possible it just seemed crazy it would even fit on the Super Nintendo, right? It was just amazing. It was crazy what they were able to do to shrink the sprites down just a bit and still retain the integrity of the way that the game played. And so, you know, I would go and try combos and I would, I would try matchups and play with my friend. It was really hard on the, uh, the D-pads on the Super Nintendo. I mean, we hadn't played that way. It's like, oh God, I can't do anything. I sure as hell can't do a walking spin pile driver. I remember getting the game into in the office and rushing straight into the games room so that we could play this thing. Work stopped 
everybody piled into the office to look at this game and to, to see whether it lived up to all the hype. You could play Street Fighter 2 on the SNES and go down the arcade and what you'd learned at home, you would be able to repeat it in the arcade and become a bit of a legend, you know? You know, it was clear immediately as soon as we started playing it that this was, was going to be one of the great. When you were sitting at home and you didn't have the arcade version next to you and you didn't have the internet to compare them like for like, it felt like it was the full experience. You'd got all the characters, you'd got the two-player mode, you'd got the battle mode, you'd got a controller that actually replicated the six buttons that were on the arcade machine, which obviously was a thing that was always a, a stumbling block, even on the Mega Drive. So it did feel like it was the arcade experience in your home. And I, I think that probably was one of the first times I really felt that I was getting the same experience that I got in the arcade that I loved, but on a home platform. So, so that was uh, a clip you can hopefully watch in the future with volume. Uh, I didn't realize <laughs> it was that low, uh, as I can't hear it on my side. Uh, but I was in the middle that's, of that's, my yeah. uh, mixer, so who knows. But uh, so many shots there we loved. We were talking behind the scenes here, just uh, how much we love these transitions and stuff. I mean, as much as I love the topic of the documentary, I have to commend you for just how beautiful it's looking. Just the way it's shot yeah, is... exactly incredible we, we're we jealous we're very jealous oh, yeah. of this production <laughs> well it's, for me it's you know i you know i i can't take credit for how wonderful it looks it's got great cinematographers chris stratton and robert james and uh, they did a splendid job all this stuff i mean they're absolute pros and um so yes we've got to go for it you can't just do it yourself <laughs> unfortunately with these sort of things i'd love to but i couldn't you know I just essentially said, I need this, I need this shot, that shot, this shot. And they went and did it. So that's awesome. Um, did a wonderful uh, job. So, um, yeah, I'll definitely be working with them again in the future on other documentaries. Fingers Ooh, crossed. Cool. And I hope we work with you in the future as well on more documentaries. Because yeah. this has been so much fun already. And we haven't even done the interview yet. So I guess I'm saying that too early. <laughs> two weeks. I should two wait. Weeks, man. We'll, yeah. should, I should yeah, wait we'll, till we'll after before it. I say that. Well, but, we'll uh, have yeah. when you have time, we'll have to do a crossover uh, for a proper DF retro. One of these something days. based on a movie or something where, you know, we do the movie parts with you and the DF retro exactly. parts. Uh, with yeah, us. Exactly. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. Yeah, we'll, we'll, uh, we'll, find, we'll find we'll find something cool and and yeah. And based on the chat today, <laughs> there was a lot of people that were very happy about having you on here. So there's clearly some crossover here. I'm not surprised. Great. 80s action movies, Street Fighter. Yeah, uh, but I'm very happy to see people uh, recognizing your work because it is fantastic. And uh, yeah, uh, go check out the Indiegogo where you can get a, a Blu-ray copy. Your name in the credits. And, of course, John and I will be behind the scenes and on the scene as we are in the documentary. And uh, I'm sure, as the extras are uh, announced, I'm sure there's more surprises on the way. And oh, cool. will be proper representation of all the people you love and like on this channel. <laughs> but that will do it for now, well, gentlemen. Before we go, though, the last little bit, the survey, we put it up at the start of the stream. Oh, 771 yes. votes. Street Fighter the movie wins over Fighting Street for the PC it, engine. It always so, wins. Of course, of course. Don't bet against Street <laughs> well, Fighter the movie. Well, thanks so guys for having go. me on, and it's been a pleasure talking with you, and I do apologize for some of the audio hiccups near the beginning. Um, so hopefully, you know, good. people won't be too miffed. <laughs> I play the video and go, wait a minute, I can't hear him! You know, then it's, half It cleared in. out uh, within the first the, 15 minutes. So, the voice yeah. of God came down from on high. <laughs> Terrifying job <laughs> as he's playing the game. And no one know, knows how you fixed it. That's the best part. So Magic. Next time we have exactly. no idea how to fix it again. That's the best. <laughs> exactly. Yes. So thanks everyone for the super chats. Thanks everyone for the uh, wonderful comments for me, John, and of course for Oliver. Uh, if you want to see more of Oliver, go to his YouTube channel, uh, Oliver Harper Retrospectives. Uh, subscribe uh, is one of the best channels if you're into the things we're into so i'm sure you already are exactly and uh, he also does some video game reviews he recently did one for aliens the new aliens game yeah uh, which Fire I, Team Elite. Yeah, yeah it's not a bad oh, game surprisingly good the more you 
the further you get into it, the better it gets. Yeah. So don't so, let the first mission put you off. And don't let the movies put you off if you're really into video games. Oliver has you covered there as well. So just make sure you subscribe to us at the same time. Uh, we can't bleed subscribers oh, yeah. into Oliver. But uh, <laughs> it's been so much fun, Oliver. Uh, we'll have you definitely back. And of course, we will see you mm. in two weeks. Yes. Take care, guys. Yes, indeed. See you. See you.